Thunder! 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 Thunder Geeks are live! Hello, Thunderians! You're listening to 102.7 FM C I L U or around the world at L U Radio C A. That was Jonathan Young with his uh full English cover of the One Punch Man season two opening. I really like his vocal range was perfect for that one. I wasn't even sure if I could get jiggy with that new intro. I was a little skeptical, but it's I. <laughs> I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. And I'm Kyle. And, and we're, we're your Thunder, Thunder Geeks. Geeks. Welcome again to another fantastic episode. I, I literally almost forgot my name. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my name's oh, Craig. Craig. Craig? Craig. Okay. For the rest of the show, he's Craig. Daniel. Craig. Da- Craig Daniel. Daniel? Is that a person? Is that a real person? Craig Daniels? There's Daniel Craig. Okay. Well, from now on... This is his evil doppelganger. (laughs) Craig. He is the knob. I don't want to be the the knob. (laughs) No, you're the knob. I don't want to be the (laughs) knob. You're Craig Daniels and you're the knob 700. 700? (laughs) Yeah. Why? It's instead of 007. 700. It's it's Bond backwards. Is Is that literally what... Denob is Bond backwards, yeah. If you take the letters okay. and you put them in the other order and then pronounce it still, Denob. So, Denob, how's it going? <laughs> Kyle, you're Denob. No, his name is Craig. His name is Craig Daniel. No, I don't know if it should be Daniel or Daniels. Excuse me, I'm a long legacy of Kyle's. Do you punch holes in drywall and drink monster energy We drinks? punch holes in sheet wall. We <laughs> punch holes in sheet wall. We punch <laughs> holes in sheet wall. <laughs> so I don't know if I, like, it's, it's like the cavity Rob tiles. Does. They make I, their cavities. I'm gonna find this post again, but there was a post on Reddit where someone was like, "Anybody with the name Karen or Chad, how has memes affected your life?" <laughs> and in the comments, I was like, "Kyle here." No, honestly, like meeting people, they're like, "Do you have anger issues? <laughs> Do you like monster?" And I'm like, "That's besides the point. <laughs> I am a person. <laughs> My own right." Kyle's feel too. Oh, wait, wait, Kyle's wait. feel like Denob. Oh. <laughs> Denob's feel too. Weren't we supposed to start like you know praising the the word the right of, the one, of the right sun, the one right sun? We'll get to that. I'm so I I did make a proposal that you got. Well, enough of us seem to be on board. Yes, because me and Kyle have a thing about cults. Yeah, Woo! You do. Considering one of them is a cult leader, Andrew. <laughs> I would not want to join hey, that cult. Hey, call me Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> so what we wanted to do for October is to have Occulttober, and every episode we'll just talk about a new cult documentary that we've watched, and then we'll decide if we want to join the cult or not, oh, or yes. we'll decide what things to adapt from the cult to build our own cult. Yes, please. Because in like the collapse of society, the only real uh, method to uh, gain power is to start a religion. Now... I'm going to call this now. Please nobody bring in Disney stuff. We all know it. It's a cult. Disney's its own little thing by now. I mean, you have a friend who's joined the cult. It's all hail the House of Mouse. She's all it's the it. most How's magical it? place on earth, Kyle. The most magical place on earth. The most magical place on earth. <laughs> What's this about the most magical place on earth? Rule of threes. Disney, it's Magic the most happened. magical place on earth. <laughs> I, uh, there's a couple of cults that are in, um, video games that I've played, and all of them, I've been like, no, you're, no, uh, have you played Far Cry 5? Uh, <laughs> Kyle? I was all for him. <laughs> oh, blessed be the father. <laughs> Take me. He was right. <sighs> I liked, uh, I liked Faith. She had this thing where she, uh, Drugs! Had this, like, drug. It was called, uh... What was it? It was like something. MacGuffin. No, it was. It had a name. Bliss or something. Yeah, Bliss. Yeah. Bliss. yeah. <laughs> and you would walk through the clouds of bliss, and everything would be like really bright colors and drugs. Drugs. <laughs> it's literally drugs. Yeah. And it's that's touch how she, fuzzy get dizzy. She would. That's how she would get. Oh, that's my religion. To it's touch fuzzy get cult. dizzy. I want to ride on the back of a Yoshi. What? Touch fuzzy, oh, get dizzy. Fuzzy, get dizzy. <laughs> That's what the bliss was. Every time you walked into it, your vision started going. Like, <laughs> there was one. It was like the children of the atom in Fallout, and they literally just worshipped a atom bomb that was in the center of a town. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, uh. I know it's the Apes Part Four, Megan. 
Was that was it the same thing? Yeah. Planet oh, of the okay. Apes Part well, Four. Now, are we talking about four. the original run? Yeah, of course. Okay, the well, Justin Heston run. Well, I had to of ask. Course. <laughs> of course. Pla- Dawn of the Planet of the Rise of the like MacGuffin no. of the Apes. No, this one was just Planet of the Apes Part Four. Oh. Wow, that's a letdown. You have I prefer a the uh, Rise of flood. the March or the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. That's part seven. <laughs> you sure? Actually, if we would go canonically. I like up over the down, uh, the planet of the brook of the uh, quadrant of the <laughs> general area of the apes. <laughs> <laughs> general area of the apes. That, that's that's actually number nine. It's gonna be general area of the apes. We can't the, go there. Where? The, Over there. The, 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 the area of the it's, apes. It's the my, ape disputed zone. My favorite. My favorite of those uh, movies is um, the uh, four story house at the end of a cul de sac. Apes. I don't know. I don't know. I screwed that one up. Wait. The four story house at the end of a cul de sac. Apes. Yeah. I need you to break that okay, one down for me, I mean, Megan. there's like horror movies that are like I've last never house seen, on the left. I've seen a lot of cul-de-sacs. I've looked at so many sacks. I've never seen any? a four-story house at the end of a cul-de-sac. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Tell us about your four-story it's sack. The, the, it, no, okay. So it's the bungalow uh, of the apes at the end of the cul-de-sac. I don't know how to say Oh, it. okay. Well, that's not four stories. A bungalow is only one yeah, story, yeah. Megan. Jeez. I changed you it. You can't okay? fit enough apes in there because they have to climb, Megan, so you can't have a bungalow. You at least have to have a two-story split. There's a treehouse in the back, duh. Oh, you think a treehouse is good enough, (laughs) Megan? We're talking about the bungalow at the end of the cul-de-sac of the Planet of the Apes. Yes. I'm sorry. Hi. Hello. your Thunder Geeks. Each week, we like to get together, talk about the nerdy stuff we've been up to this week, what's going on in our community, and just try to make it laugh for an hour and a half. And yell about apes. <laughs> and yell about apes. Uh, we do have an exciting interview coming up in our uh, second half where... Oh, gosh. As, as we, as we uh, have come back, we uh, got to go to uh, Icon, of course, and one of my favorite people to see at Icon always is Greg Ayers. He was so gracious with us uh, lab in our well, last year. When we got to talk to him, because it was the, the end of the con, he was tired, he sat down with us, gave us an awesome hot dog recipe, so he was jazzed to sit down with us this time. He actually came prepared, loaded with recipes to give us, and then starts giving it, not only by exacting measurements, in one of them, we also get the time and temperature in the oven to put it on. Yeah, so just directly messaged me, he's like, hey, here's my recipe, here you go. No, yeah. that's that's some serious stuff. Like I've been super watching, like binging with Babish and like Bon Appetit Test Kitchen and stuff like that. And they have like, I have to take it out at two seventy two degrees. And I was like, I, how would you? T- I'd be so anxious waiting for that one degree to change <laughs> that I'd like knock the pot over. I mean, I'm also. Just- we should, sorry, we should have a, a cooking show with with Kyle called "Oh God, is it done yet?" And it's, just like, it's just Kyle like that's literally panicking me. around the kitchen, knocking stuff over. And that's Kyle, just me, Kyle. That's just me baking. I'm like sitting there, I'm like, "Is it done yet?" Kyle isn't played by Kyle; he's played by a Muppet. Thank you. Oh, you read my mind because that was the next thing I was going to say. Is instead of Kyle, we'll have Kyle playing. A Muppet, so we'll have Kyle, we'll have you voicing it, but we're just going to have flailing arms, and we're going to have you do all of the prep work with Muppet hands, but then we're going to cut away, and it's going to be all, like, finely diced. I was like, you're just going to, like, <laughs> hand in the room, and it's just going to be, like, one of the wacky, wavelength inflatable arm flailing tube men, like, in the center of the room, just, the like, flailing about. that so smoothly. We it could does. do Swedish Chef. There. You bark, you bark, you bark. <laughs> Except with Kyle. So you go. I was gonna say that. It, do you remember that video? It was flat beat, and then there was like the Eric puppet, and it was like bump 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 bump, and there was like the Muppet on the phone, and he was like putting the music on the phone. Do you not remember this? It was no. Amazing. It was just like a three-minute video of this like beat, and then I'm this de- Muppet you know I'm depressed. Like I didn't. I'm not down with Muppet beats. I'm just sad. Yeah, Cause it's like that's the arms that I'm picturing. It's like these long noodly arms with like just three fingers on the end of it for hands. See, I was just picturing like Kermit style with the like little wire coming off the wrist, just <laughs> and then like Velcro a knife onto it. <laughs> it's just that waving around. And we've established you're very easy to make as like 
Oh yeah, it's just generic character number two. Generic character. No- you're you're oh, the blonde one. I love it. You know it what? makes making avatars so easy in games when people yeah. are like, "What do you mean it's just a preset?" And I was like, <laughs> "Bruh, it's just a preset. You're it looks pre- like me. It's actually before. called Kyle." Yeah, it's just presets that are in there, and I'm like, I have to tweak the hair like just a little bit to make it look more emo, and then that's about it. <laughs> It comes with a monster energy drink already attached. Sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> they do come in, like, you know, good cup. Did Megan just Google generic? No, no, no. It's, it's the flat Eric. That's the Muppet. And he would sit at this desk and, like, answer the phone, and he would just, like, put the, put the music on the phone and then jam oh. out to it. I, that's I, what I want. The, that's what I want the Kyle Muppet to kind of look like. But oh man, like can we just hat. have an episode where we replace our entire cast with Muppets? With Muppets? We yes. won't acknowledge it. We'll just have it on the stream, and uh, we'll just do puppets. I should just do that when I start streaming. Let's yes. Just, like to put a puppet like right in the center, just like have it flail Get around that a little bit. Kyle, if you do that, I volunteer to voice your Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> but I get to voice Andrew. If, if Andrew's voicing Kyle, what? I voice Oh, Andrew. no, no, no. Kyle, Kyle still speaks, but I get to do the mouth Greg, flaps. Greg, thank you. Greg just posted a picture of Flat Eric. <laughs> Greg, thank you. Okay, Greg gets the joke. Yeah! I've never heard of Flat Eric. <laughs> I have no idea. Honestly. <laughs> regular Eric. I honestly have no idea. It must be like, is it like Newgrounds level or is it like early It was YouTube? just this random Where? Video was it pre-YouTube? It was pre-YouTube. It would just, oh, it would wow. just be on Much Music every well, day at the hold same on. time. Okay, then how did... Wait a minute. Didn't you say you lived did there. have much, much I did music? have Much Music. No, she had Much Music. She didn't have Teletoon. I didn't have Teletoon. Uh. I didn't have YTV, so I didn't get to watch all the beautiful animes. <laughs> yeah, because we got to joke that we're from a small town in Winnipeg. But then there's Megan, who's from who where we consider a small town. We have like maybe eight thousand people, if that. I, I right think, now I think it's sitting at five thousand. I think you from, have eight people. Megan's at from real world Letterkenny. <laughs> I'm literally from Letterkenny, honestly. Uh, Chris, <laughs> Kyle <laughs> has Eric! broken his mind because he's actually looking at this. He saw that. Flat it's Eric. from the UK office. Yeah. Four point six thousand. Four point six thousand what? <laughs> People, people in Geraldton. It's Letterkenny. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, actually so smaller. Have... Letterkenny yeah. is 5,000 people. <laughs> yeah. Wow. They have 400 more people than you, Megan. <laughs> you know, like, the kids that would ride around on bikes, like, all the time, and they would, like, hang around the corner stores buying, like, candy and stuff? That was me. That was, like, our entire generation. Every time we would go to a corner <laughs> store, there would be a different group of kids. And it never stops. They're always there. Five cent candies. My favorite thing is, like, high... It was... Like, as soon as I called it out for being Kyle, he looks offended and then pauses and goes, yeah, yeah. Kyle grew up, like, just, like, a click away from Letterkenny, basically, didn't you? Yeah, King Garden's not a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. When our, like, claim to fame to town is the Scottish pipe band that plays once a weekend. <laughs> oh, wow. We walk through the town. <laughs> There's videos. That I've, like, I've done it a lot. I love, I love bagpipes, like, I, real yes. bad. I kind of want to see Kyle attempt a bagpipe. No, no, no. I want to try to attempt bagpipes. I have pipes. crazy lung capacity, though, so it works. He, he, I think he's second right now, but you've gotten a little more out of shape, Andrew, so... Kyle I know, I have you. lost breath. I'd have to uh, regain. I used to be able to just hold that for a good long while. He was very good at inhaling. Yep, I learned for swimming. Same. Yep. Yeah, good old 100%, 100% swimming. 100% swimming, just diving <laughs> just, in the water. I've had to do a lot of lung capacity tests in my life, so we, I, don't, I don't know. We make bubbles. Don't you also have asthma? <laughs> I, do, I do have asthma. <laughs> I'm just imagining just like you start going... <laughs> <laughs> that is probably exactly what would happen. That's authentic Scottish. That is authentic <laughs> Scottish, yeah. But, uh, oh. yeah, no, so we were talking about... Uh, Icon and the the interview we have coming up here. We go from Icon Sorry. to Icon. <laughs> oh, I love like, our swagways. It's so good. Swagways. Swagways is swagways. the new swagways. title yeah. for it. I don't care what any. Th- <laughs> Rob Dab, <laughs> we've infected him. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> we, we got him. Kyle, we. T- ladies don't and five me. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, how dare you? <laughs> We have been harassing Rob with dabs for so long now just to try to force it upon him because we hate it and we hate ourselves and thus we must dab. And Rob hates it every time. We made Rob dab. Yeah, that was a tiny dab. I yeah. have the same baby shark. I have a good I have a good story about dabs. If you want to see our dabs, yeah, you can too. do so on our Facebook page at <laughs> facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak where you can take a peek inside the studio. 
So I am selling a small item to a girl who is very excited about this item. Oh. It is a uh, Infinity Gauntlet uh, uh, flower holder. <laughs> Fla yeah. Oh, uh, does the middle oh. finger just like hold the flowers? An, an Infinity Gauntlet flower holder. It's, a, it's like a it's like a pot plant holder. It's a potted plant. It's a potter. It's a plant potter. There we go. Harry Potter. You can use it for like pens and stuff too. Whatever. Anyways, so it Infinity has Gauntlet all, plant potter. It has all the gems on it. She was super jazzed. She's like, I can use it for my succulent. Yay! And I was like, cool, awesome. And I was like, guess what? I was like, what what stone is that on his thumb? And she's like, uh. The time stone? And I was like, yeah, what color is it? And she's like, it's green. And I was like, so that, does that mean that Thanos has a green thumb? And then I dabbed, and she laughed, and I turned and around, and who's standing there but Mom Pod and Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> no joke. She just turns around, and I'm like... <laughs> and the face Kyle made was this. He just... To, just a horrified... Disappointed, like, lips turned down, squinted eyes, just... Ugh. The like, look Kyle gives me every time he comes home and sees like, me on the couch. You know when you eat something bad and you're like, ugh, that was the face he made. And I just, it's burned into my brain forever. And I can't wait until Kyle makes that face at you for he something. He does I do. But... All the time. <laughs> I just accepted that as Kyle's neutral face now. That also has a green thumb. <laughs> That's my dad Bad joke. times at Richmond High. Bad times. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. For, uh, you know, life, life. Okay. Love. My coworker calls Happiness. you out on being a little too Megan. Yeah, she's like, yeah, I went to EB and bought a game, and I had a bunch of change, and she, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry about this all this change, and then she says, and Megan went, give me all that change. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> Megan, I, I also believe in change. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, give me that change, please. Like, I don't know, change is money. We need change all the time. <laughs> Easy there, Gollum. <laughs> is it too late to change my mind to be here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. I mean, that would be hilarious for the stream, just watching Mompod try to escape, considering there's like four people he has to get through one just way. Just shuffle through. Or if you try to him. jump over, it just be stop. No, you just Batman jump out the window. Cheese man, don't jump. <laughs> no, he could just like hop out the window. He'd be fine. He, he can... gets stuck. No, he... you can't get. He's made of cheese. Wrap he your shirt through. around your hand, bust the window, and then jump out. Why does he need? And to that'd be like that scene no. from The Good Guys where that he tries. Way, if the glass breaks on your hand, you don't get cut and bleed. It's all made of cheese. But, it's made of cheese. But it's yeah, it's just gonna smush out of place, like you know, <gasps> like silly putty. Just go. Okay. <laughs> Have you? I don't know if you guys watched it. But I did send the trailer for Spaghetti Man. Spaghetti. Uh, this no. is a real movie, by no, the way. No, I, I watched I, the whole thing. I have. I need to explain something to you. I need to hear about Spaghetti so, Man. Spaghetti Man does not care about normal superhero things. So he'll walk out to a girl getting kidnapped and be like, "You got like forty bucks, so I can save you." <laughs> <laughs> and then it gets better because he doesn't know what happened. He's made of spaghetti. Like, he's literally made of spaghetti. Literal spaghetti. He, he gets, like, stabbed. And Meatballs? He's like, he's like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, when he throws it. Oh. Like was he blessed with powers from, like, the flying spaghetti monster? No, the something? microwave went awry when he was uh, on the couch inebriated and then woke up <laughs> and was like, oh, no. And he sneezed and spaghetti came out. And then he went to the bathroom and then he just peed spaghetti for a while and then went to the doctor. And the doctor was like, do you want a green card? <laughs> <laughs> yes. His oh, diploma man. just had like a big leaf on it. It was great. But um, played by Cheech. But yeah, that girl that he's like saving, right? He like whips spaghetti and just like knocks her out. <laughs> the guy, the guy who's like kidnapping her is like what? And he runs away because the guy just whipped spaghetti. <laughs> and so he like spaghetti man just like sits there and waits for the girl to get back up. And he's like, I diligently waited for you to get back up for that forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, and like, mm. turns out crime does pay. It was no, it's it, it's great. I'm pretty sure uh, Bob from Fight Club is his roommate. Like I'm just ninety percent sure, but he's like the cop that's like I can't get into cop school. <laughs> and then, like, oh that old trope. His roommate gets spaghetti powers and then decides to be you know a superhero, villain, quote unquote superhero. The kind of hero Kyle would be. 
Well, I mean, I, yeah. I, I hero for profit. He's a hero for profit, yeah. That's not that far away from The Boys. You think this is a prequel Ooh. to The Boys? I hope he was not... <laughs> You, you the last thing I that, know about the ending, he's told me the this. The last thing you see in Spaghetti Man is it's like he will be arriving in Justice League or the Avengers or whichever superhero team decides to take him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the Great super, Lakes Avengers is probably his open. best bet. He can't die. Oh. Yeah. He's made of spaghetti. He, made, he like reforms. I can kill spaghetti. No, he's like, <laughs> you can try to eat it, but he's just made of infinite spaghetti. Oh. So he could feed world, like, solve world hunger. I'm just well, he has the, th- there's a thought about that where he's like, I could actually save and, like, feed the homeless. Yeah. <coughs> but I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining Andrew, like, completely befriending Spade Man for the sole reason of, hey, bud, can I suck on your finger? I'm a little hungry. Ew. I would carry around, like, a, like, a Saggio cheese with me. It's warm. <gasps> That's ah, it's warm. It, c- it comes out warm. Well, yeah, you That's don't want good. cold spaghetti. I'll have eaten cold spaghetti. Because it was out of the microwave, right? Like, yeah. I love all this, like, wave of microwave memes. So this is, I'm sold. I am sold. The microwave gave life to the spaghetti man. No joke. It's, I saw the trailer for it. I thought it wasn't real. Then I found the actual movie. <laughs> watched it. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Guys, where do we go from that? Where do you guys go? remember, is it a good idea to microwave this? Yes. No. Wait, it was and, a YouTube show oh, where this, all they did was microwave. Okay, so this was during day. that period of YouTube? It was in the early cool. days of YouTube. Remember, um, like, I'm gonna blend s- that's still on yeah. there? It's still going. Uh, yeah, and there, there's still, like, cut things with a million degree knife. <gasps> and I love watching that. One of my favorite yeah. ones is put, making put, chainsaw noises while I cut cheese at 3 a.m. Put things in a CNC press. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what's my favorite one? Is the shredder. So, you know those, like, mechanical. Oh, got you, tatas. Yeah, the industrial shredders. The industrial shredders. I love watching compilation videos of those things just eat stuff. I've oh, seen them eat cows. It's so it's just so satisfying to watch <laughs> them like crush and shred stuff. Like I don't know why I'm so obsessed with it. But yes, Andrew, uh, is it a good idea to microwave this? Literally, they just spent multiple years throwing whatever in a microwave, and one episode they almost killed themselves because they threw an airbag in there. And it explodes. <laughs> it explodes. Everything yeah. explodes like, on that yeah. show. Yeah, well, not There's CDs. Ne- I think there was like. Four good ideas they in the entire like, run. How much oh. money are they making where they can afford all these microwaves? Microwaves are dirt they're, they're cheap. Dirty. You can yeah. pick them Nowadays. up like at the dump. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's Fair. what they openly said. It's like we we got this at like the pawn shop for two bucks. Because then you can like <laughs> cut it so you can like have the door open or closed when you like microwave things. Because sometimes they have like a whole room that's tin foiled off. Because no one likes roasted nuts. Yes. That was their catchphrase. They're dealing Fair. with radio or microwaves. Fair. And it was literally just a normal door like the one in yeah. our studio covered in tin foil. It's everyday door just with tin oh, foil on it and they were just microwaving everything. <laughs> Don't play with microwaves, kids. I remember there was a prank that people would pull before where they would put four phones in the middle and you'd watch popcorn pop. But it turns out the way they were doing it is they were taking the magnetron out of microwaves and putting it underneath the table pointing up. So it's actually blasting all of their faces and reproductive organs. <laughs> powered microwaves nice. speaking of messed up microwaves um i know andrew may or may not have seen him uh do you remember the great orbax yes. refresh me i uh, the, uh, the name the, sounds he's familiar the university of guelph professor who's also a traveling sideshow with his brother sweet pepper Klopek. they've been to town several times they're the ones who taught me how to put a condom up my nose and take it out of my mouth ah yes those ones <laughs> um so in, they did a bunch of quote-unquote science experiments and in one of them, they basically make a hand-sized hole in the back of a microwave so Pepper could put his hand inside a microwave and nuke I've it. I've seen this. Yeah. And when it comes out, it's got black spots all over. He's like, is that good? Do you ever see Idle Hand? Yes. What? Oh, there's a Seth Green movie where he gets his hand chopped off and he puts it in a microwave. Oh, it's possessed. Yeah. <laughs> it kills people. Uh... Yep. So, we're going to take a break from our microwave-themed show, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, around the world at luradio.ca, or streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. We're your Thunder Geeks, and we'll be right back. And we're back. You're listening to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, around the world at luradio.ca, or streaming video live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak where you can take a peek inside the studio. So we have a very, very exciting interview, but before that, that was Daki Makara from Hentai Dude. Oh, 
I love uh, I've, Pet I've, Sematoon. Listen to Ooh Woo. It's so uh, good. I was very close to playing Ooh Woo. I'm like, hmm. Did you play that like two, three weeks ago? No. No, no. no I didn't. We were close, but we didn't. We played it in the car. We played it in the car. A right. Lot, a lot. I highly recommend his music. It's a little bit older now, but if you're into, like, anime rap, which is a very, very narrow niche genre. But the interview coming up. So we got to talk with Greg Ayers at Icon, and he was gracious enough to sit down with us after the con. So we're just going to throw right to that. You, you ready with the mom pod? Okay, with no further ado, Greg Ayers. So we're here at Icon 2019, blessed with the beautiful company of Greg Ayers. <laughs> oh my god. So Greg, what have you been up to since we last met? Oh man, so much. I like My biggest thing is not necessarily work-related. I went to Belgium to go to a giant rave with like 50,000 people this year. 50,000? Oh. Yeah, I turned 50 this year, so I was like... What is not 50? And then I saw <laughs> advertisements for this thing called Rampage in Belgium, and it's like the world's largest drum and bass and dubstep party. So uh, one of my friends from Winnipeg, my buddy John, who DJed with me last night, and my friend Maggie, who works security for me in, at a lot of the Midwest shows, we all flew and met each other in Amsterdam and took this little journey to Antwerp for this big, crazy party. Oh, that is uh, And then coming back after that, like, I am working. I'll talk about work in a second, but the, oh. the <laughs> most exciting thing, uh, and it had been a secret, I'd been knowing about this since, I think, February. I worked with Miyavi at Anime Boston, and I am a huge Miyavi fan. So when they were like, uh, do you think now, I mean, if your schedule permits, would you like to help us uh, officiate like uh, the Miyavi panel? I was like, what? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yes. But it was this big secret because we were announcing his new album, Issei Shikawa, the manga for Tokyo Ghoul was doing the artwork for the album. We're announcing that he was in the new Maleficent film. He's playing, a, for the first time, not playing a villain in something because he's <laughs> done a lot of films, but he's always the bad guy. And then the biggest was we got to show off the new guitar that Fender had designed for him. It's called the Acoustasonic. And it's super cool. It's an acoustic electronic, uh, acoustic electric guitar, which doesn't sound like a big deal because we've all seen like the Gibsons and the yeah. you know, Rickenbackers. But like the difference is this doesn't have a big hollow body. It's got a very tiny hole. But because of the way Miyavi plays, you know, he plays slap style like a bassist. He gets all of that resonance for the, for the slap style. But then with the flip of a switch, it goes into that squealy high, you know, that solid state sound that you only get from like a solid guitar so it was super cool getting to work with him was really neat because was I used to be a big fan of a lot of Japanese rock bands and like meeting yeah. their management and meeting them sometimes undoes the love <laughs> I'm happy to say that like Miyavi is like the nicest human being I've ever worked with he's just the coolest guy like so humble so friendly with fans like it was just neat. And hearing him talk about Maleficent, he kept saying, well, Angie wanted to do a film. I was like, oh, Angie. We call Angelina Jolie Angie, do we? So <laughs> it was kind of cool. Like, I'm not on that level yet. But uh, but it was so neat to get to work with Miyavi. And, like, to know, like, when I was just first starting in this business, that, that was, like, one of my favorite guitar players. And now it's like would you like to do a panel with me I'm like of course i would like to do a panel with Miami. <laughs> so the coolest thing is the kid i based my role in beck on now works at like he moved to texas and they're doing really well their band casino am is doing really well he's working he does light and sound and one of the places he works is this bar called come and take it Guess where Miyavi's playing next Tuesday? Oh no! That's Come and take beautiful. it. So he's gonna get to see Miyavi, and I get to like I get to hang out with him all over again. So it's gonna be really cool. Uh, Work-wise, I'm still working. I just did Love Stage for uh, Sentai Filmworks, which is the first like super yaoi title they've done. They're starting to dip their pool, you know, t pinky toe in the pool of all the yaoi titles. So I did Hitorijime My Hero earlier, and then Love Stage is like kind of their big their big one they just did uh, still uh still doing stuff uh food wars it started airing on a uh, cartoon network or on toonami i think i could talk about it i'm not sure but i may have done some more high q recently Ooh. if if i'm not supposed to talk about it then i didn't but uh <laughs> but yeah so i'm doing a lot of continuing stuff i also have a lot going on in my personal life just because uh i have two family members that are sick i spend a lot of my free time doing that like running people to the doctor and like making sure you know everybody's good so uh so i'm splitting my time over a bunch of stuff 
you know, because I love sleeping so much. So. <laughs> okay, so you got to reprise your role as Negi Springfield yeah, recently. Yeah, an EQ holder. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty wild. I was, if, since there's a lot of studios starting to redo and, like, Recreate. continue and make, like, new sequels. Yeah, yeah. Is there any uh, other roles that you would love to, like, revisit? Yeah, uh, and, and luckily I've been able to do it so far. We lost Sayuki for a while, but now, since I Filmworks got the OVAs and then Funimation got Reload Blast. So I've luckily been able to reprise one of my favorite roles. If anybody were to ever pick up Dead Man Wonderland, I definitely wouldn't want anybody get Ganta away from me like but uh, <laughs> yeah but at the same time like I have a lot of friends that are in the new dub of Evangelion and mm. it's kind of awful the way the general public has treated them yeah, yeah. so like uh I've you seen. know yeah it, oh it's horrible it's even harder for me because one of my very dear friends has one of the leads she kind of poured her heart into the whole thing and was real like the most proud she's been of something in a while and just gets eaten alive on the internet. So like, I think as actors, we need to at least lay the groundwork and say, there's not one Romeo, there's not one Juliet. We all knew how Titanic was gonna end. Like, if someone else dubs Evangelion, it's okay. And that's funny, because I was pretty butthurt when I was recast in the Funimation version. The bottom line is, like, all of the other Kalru's are friends. It's funny, I'm still the only connecting thread to every Kalru. <laughs> so, like, Kyle Sturdivant and I did theater together. Aaron Crone's mother was my first dance teacher. I'm the third Kalru. Uh, Jerry Jewell is the fourth. And now Cliff Chapin Jr. is the, the, the <laughs> most recent one. So I'm like... I'm still the connecting thread. Like I'm Six still the divide. Yeah. Greg's bacon. Yeah, <laughs> Greg's bacon. That's right. But uh, but it's cool. Uh, so like, as much as I think it's important to be able to reprise a role, I think it's also important for actors to put realistic expectations on fans. And like, I was happy to see a few of the OG Evangelion people. Hey, could you please leave the cast of the you know new dub alone? And I think that's. Partly our responsibility as actors, because like it's something that happens a lot. Uh, I took the role of Junior in, in Xenosaga when my friend Brienne had done such a wonderful job in all the video games. But the fact was they weren't going to let them use any union actors. So at least I was excited that someone who loves Brienne's work was doing it. And I even was like, I hope I can do this role justice. I would listen to Metropolis before I'd go into record. So I wasn't taking her Junior with me, but I was taking that spunky spirit that she usually brings to so many roles. You hate to see a role get away from you, but I think it's I've seen the grossest opposite of that with the way the cast of Ava's been treated, so... It's been pretty horrific, yeah, and yeah. purists are just not going to accept anything yeah, that isn't a shot-for-shot sure. shot remake. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I've tried to tell the few people that have talked to me about it. I'm like, yes, a lot of people hate it now, but at some point it'll be the only version of Evangelion that some people have known. And that's when it'll stop being a big deal, like when people just like, oh, I love this story... I think this is cool. I love big robots, you know, and they'll just watch it. And these will be the first voices they ever hear. And so I'm super glad that at some point all that drama will die down. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Last time you passed on an epic hot dog recipe. Oh, man. We're, I've we're, got, we're I've a little got hurt. Some new ones. Oh, you got yeah, Not perfect, hot dog perfect. recipes, but I've got a new condiment for your hot dog that is game changing. <laughs> and I apologize now because it will also game change everything you eat. When we were in Belgium, we had something called curry ketchup. Ooh. And I, of course, being a huge curry fan, thought, oh, you just put curry and ketchup. No. no. There's an actual recipe and I'm gonna try <laughs> to get it off the top of my head, but I probably will get it wrong. It is a cup of ketchup, like just regular old, you know, tomato ketchup, and then one tablespoon of curry, one tablespoon of paprika, one half tablespoon of chili pap uh, chili powder, weirdly enough, one tablespoon of honey, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and two tablespoons of water. And you mix it up. Oh my God. It is, uh, <laughs> it's like somewhere between barbecue sauce and curry and ketchup with some like a little sweetness. We had it on French fries in in Belgium, and they're like they're called schnockfries. They're like the street <laughs> French fries, yeah. and you either get them covered in street mayo, which is also made differently with peanut sauce, like Thai peanut sauce and what? onions, which is 
but they're called Orlog, Orlog Snock Freeze, or they do them with ketchup, and the ketchup that Maggie got was the curry ketchup, and I was like, oh, God. Well, so forever I've made fun of people that put egg ketchup on their eggs just because yeah. I make fun of my friends that do things. <laughs> and I was making an omelet for my mom, and I do the French-style omelets where you roll them up and they kind of look like a, a little uh, taquito or whatever. <laughs> and so I put cheese on top, and I was like, you know, I bet this curry ketchup would be good. And I just kind of went, <laughs> and like did a little pattern on the top. My mom flipped out. She was like, what did you put on my, and I was like, oh, it was probably the ketchup. And I put some on my finger. I was like, see if this is it. She puts that ketchup on everything now. She's put it on the fish sandwich from McDonald's and something else. Like she's, But we put it on hot dogs and it was stupid. So there's a new condiment sensation. You can use it for so many things. Even just to dip french fries in. It's just fantastic. So curry ketchup. Curry right. ketchup. Curry and ketchup. I've also learned, this is from my con travels. I was in Iowa recently in Des Moines and there was a place called Fong's Pizza. Fong's Pizza. F-H-O-N-G. And it looked like a Chinese restaurant. So what do you think they make? More. Chinese food pizza. And that sounds <laughs> revolting. And it was the best thing in the world. So my new favorite thing is a crab rangoon pizza. Mm. And and it's literally just you take either a pizza crust or now I'm, I'm being a foodie. It's appropriate the Food Wars is on Toonami at Saturday at 1. Uh, there's a plug. But you take either a flat piece of flatbread or a pizza crust and you cover the bottom in cream cheese, like which is so dietary. <laughs> uh, and then you drizzle sweet chili oil and sweet and sour sauce and then mozzarella and flake crab and then you crush up the little wonton toppers that you put on salad and put it in the oven at 400 for 10 minutes and <laughs> eat a delicious Rangoon pizza. So yeah, so food. There's oh. all the food. There's my latest food recommendations. That is beautiful. I am a big food nerd, so I'm, I'm always excited when you ask about food. <laughs> you, you were saying last time that you had given up animal bribe products. Have you moved back into that? I had given up. I was moving away from eating a lot of red meat. Red I'm meat. still ah. trying to stay away from too much red meat. It's just not good for me. Like, And I, do, I was a vegetarian for a long time, and unfortunately I'm slightly anemic, so that makes managing the iron level in my diet really hard. So I I still, if I can avoid like red meat stuff, I can. That being said, I have eaten the lion's share of poutine this weekend. <laughs> so I have probably gotten way more oxtail gravy in my system than I'm supposed to have. My cardiologist would probably kill me if she saw all the poutine I've been eating. <laughs> but it's one of those things I don't get poutine in the States. So I'm like, well, what is this pizza poutine? We were just at Boston's and they had a pizza poutine. And I was like, well, when in Rome, I can't do it. So. <laughs> I like I try I if in a perfect world I would like to be completely cruelty free but I'm also very lazy when it comes to like finding the right store sometimes and I do have a certain health thing I have to worry about so what else what you got <laughs> did you have any like meatless comfort foods that you go to we, we have a lot of vegetarian yes. listeners yes. So, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Well, there's actually a really great I so I just got a tofu press too which I love oh. there's a really really easy and I wish I knew the marinade for it but uh I do just pressed pressed tofu with like a marinade and I think it's like soy sesame and there's one other it's something with garlic it's soy sesame and there's something garlic in it and you what i do is i press the tofu and get all the water out you know dump it like two or three times and then you put the marinade in and take the take the press off of it and let it go <laughs> and like suck in all the marinade and then i throw it in i just chop it up and throw it in an air fryer for like five minutes and it's just a great little tofu like you know a little crunchy snack <laughs> and then I've fallen in love with Beyond Burgers and Impossible Burgers and the cool thing about them is you can get them everywhere now like when yeah. I first had an Impossible Burger there were only like four places serving them in Houston and now they're everywhere another thing that I like that I don't it has no meat in it if you make it without the chicken but it's Sounds so awful. Man, this has turned into the Gregor's food cast. Uh, <laughs> butter, chicken, mac, and cheese. And just don't Ooh. put the chicken in it. Oh, oh So you yeah. just use the butter. I mean, but you can. If, you, if you're a meat eater, you can put the chicken in it. But it's just a combination of butter, chicken, and mac and cheese. And the way I like to do it is to put naan in the little, you know, the little dishes that you put tortillas in and make the taco bowls? Yeah. Stick naan in that, and you make a little naan taco bowl. 
we've been getting beautiful fusions of like Canadian and East Indian food. So we've yeah. been getting buttered chicken poutine recently. Oh, oh it they is, have, yeah, they have it at DNC. Gorgeous. I love it. I love it. Yeah. But the buttered chicken sauce is one of my favorites. That's why I said, I don't know what's in it. I don't think there's any meat in the sauce itself. I think it's tomato based with curry and, and yogurt and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think it should be fine. Uh, the only thing you'd have to be careful with, with the vegan thing would be the cheese for the mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah, this is turning into food cast, but yeah, that's my my non my non meat stuff. Well, uh, let's let's shift kimchi. to business. Let's shift to yeah. business because yeah. my first introduction to you uh, in a panel yeah. was your bootleg panel where my sister oh, dragged wow. me to that, yeah. and you terrified me of con plushies for life. Oh, oh yeah, the <laughs> fiberglass con plushie story. So, yeah. Do you yeah. think the situation for piracy and bootlegging has improved in recent years with raising awareness? I, I mean, I don't, but I do. Like, uh, I saw plenty of things this last month at multiple conventions, and I'm like, how can anyone not know this is a bootleg? But <laughs> I think that companies that make merchandise have also stepped up their game because for a while that was the problem. There wasn't merchandise and to import it from Japan is really expensive. Like if you're a Square Enix fan, you know how much that stuff is from the Square Enix site and <laughs> most people can't afford that. I think the thing that we've seen, and Great Eastern has been a huge help in that, uh, we've seen companies in the States... Uh, or in North America, like step up their game as far as marketing and and actually making merchandise. So, Filling the demand. Yeah. So I think that like even though I see a lot of bootlegs still about, I see a lot of legitimate stuff. Like I bought a Pop Team Epic waifu pillow this weekend, and Aww. it's an official it's an official <laughs> pillow. So I was like, oh man, I think we're able to get more stuff now. Could you give our listeners some advice on maybe how to avoid the bootlegs when they're at conventions? Yeah, I mean, it's all real It's all real specific to whatever you're buying, but there are some, like, kind of telltale signs. Like, you always want to look for trademark and copyright information because those copyright holders clutch that intellectual property for dear life. So, like, you'd never see, for instance, like, anything to do with Mario that didn't have Nintendo's logo on it. You wouldn't see Full Metal Alchemist stuff without Aniplex or Funimation's logo on it. So I usually say the first thing to look for is like copyright and trademark stuff. It used to be like shoddy printing, but it, printing has gotten so cheap that there are bootlegs that look better than the original now. There's a one of the Kenshin soundtracks. The bootleg looks way better than the actual the actual disc. Really? So, yeah, it's <laughs> kind of bad. I was like, <laughs> oh wild. no, because they're like, can you tell which one is different? I was like, well, obviously that one. And they're like, nope, it's this one. Printing has changed a lot. I, the other thing I would look for is know the product you want to buy. If you know there's supposed to only be six episodes per disc, but there's this special limited edition of Dead Man Wonderland that has 10 episodes on one disc, Chances are the way they've done that is to compress it and like when any y'all know anytime you compress audio or video it just turns to garbage yeah, yeah and, like all just... artifacty and weird <laughs> and that's why and I never understood but that's why apparently in the old days when you got those crappy Hong Kong bootleg discs that's why sometimes the subtitles would start and they wouldn't because the coding because of the compression the coding Gets didn't old. catch so I always thought it was weird because I'm like I know this isn't a computer but I would reboot my DVD player and my subtitles would come up and it was just that it did a bad first pass <laughs> scan and there was so much compression so i think those are the telltale signs is to know the product and know what it's supposed to look like and what it's supposed to have on it and if you don't know that at least check for trademark stuff because that's on everything the one thing i would tell people bootleg uh, soundtracks and plushies are the hardest to spot they really are. There's two companies that bootleg CDs and they have their own logo and their own. And so everything looks very official. But if you look up Mio Recordings on Wikipedia, it says that it's a gray market good, you know, thing. So it's kind of weird. But I would say tread careful, like most careful around the the plushies and the soundtracks for sure well we're deep into music with the radio so let's flip back for music yeah. for a second L Do let's it. get some music recommendations yeah, here so yeah. give us oh man Woo. can you give us a top three for edm and j-rock oh yeah oh for j-rock i'm out of the loop on j-rock stuff right now it doesn't like, have to be i will new. say the new i would say the new um and the well the weird thing with fan music now everything's mm -hmm. moving shifting so hard towards korean music yeah so yes. like like my friend right now is doing i would say she's touring with them but that 
that makes it sound like she works for them. But my friend is following Monster X all over the U.S. right now. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, my God. I had friends that waited like six hours to get BTS tickets. So I was like, oh, my gosh. So it's so hard because uh, in Blackpink, we played Blackpink at, at, at the rave at Anime Midwest. So which is cool to me because the people producing Blackpink are the same people that produce to anyone. So it's kind of like a new to anyone but let's see top five edm right now it's so tough because i listen to so much uh drum and bass it all leans towards that but there's a producer that i've been playing a lot of and i might as well plug him at the top because he's uh, a young guy and and uh, he goes by the name e-tank and you can find him on soundcloud but all of the really stupid super cool emo mixes that i've been playing at the raves the my chemical romance track the billy eilish track Panic at the Disco track. He's this guy that I play some shows with once in a while in DC, but he's just a DJ from Detroit and he's just killing it with his production stuff right now. So his name is Adam Besant, but we he goes by the name E-Tank. So uh, look for that. The new Avicii is really hard to listen to. It's good, but I have a really hard time listening to, especially the song that everybody loves because he talks about being dead in the song. So I'm like... Ooh, Context, I, it, I it's like, hard. I will listen to this later when it's not so new, <laughs> which even it's hard to believe that's not even a new like that's almost a year old now. There is new music. There's a child screaming. Sorry, I'm, my ADD is like, ah, <laughs> turn and look. There's a baby screaming. <laughs> there's been some really fun new stuff coming out of uh, Ram Records. There's a new female drum and bass producer I'm really into. Called, her name is Molly Collins. And she's like 20 years old and just tearing up the drum and bass world right now. There's a new Knife Party album. Uh, it's a, I guess it's an EP called Lost Souls. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm digging the Battle Angel Alita soundtrack because yeah. there's the Dua Lipa a track that's so good and there's a drum and bass remix of that that I play and the new Maduk is really good it's hard like I can't pick, I can never pick the top five of anything oh, we don't need to talk yeah. we just want that we just want to know what to listen yeah oh man there's <laughs> so much good music coming out right now yeah yeah uh definitely I watch labels more than I watch uh, specific artists now because it seems labels are farming like a specific sound oh and the new Andy C is really good too um <laughs> I'm like and this but I've been, I, I used to be a part of something called Drip, and it sucks because it, it dried up, no pun intended. <laughs> like, it, it was a great idea, but it just didn't take off. And you basically subscribed to a record label. And for a certain amount of month, you got everything that label produced digitally, That's which awesome. was great because I was subscribed to like Hospital Records, Ram Records, Alsa, which is Skrillex's label, Mad Decent, and oh, what's A Track's label's name? I can think of. Ah, I can't think of it now. <laughs> Fool's Gold, Fool's Gold. I could think of the logo, but I couldn't think of the name of the label. <laughs> but so like for months, I was getting like 20 and 30 releases from each label. And it was so such a great way to keep track of it. SoundCloud is the way I like to discover music sometimes. But man, the hoops you have to jump through to get free tracks on SoundCloud kind of make it not worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, like, oh, you now like us on Spotify. And now give us your child, you know, firstborn. And give us, mm -hmm. the, like, I'm like... I just want to play this one track. Like one of your arms and one yeah. of your legs. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, I just want to play this song. Streaming services putting the entire industry in an upheaval. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think most of the artists aren't aware of how how limiting that is to people that want to just distribute their music. I know a lot of producers, that's why I plugged Adam first, why I plugged E-Tank at the top of that list. I know people that work really hard to get good music out and love the idea of a crowd listening to something they've produced. So it's kind of weird when you have gatekeepers or like, well, if you want this song, you have to give us your you know, email and you're, you have to like us on Facebook. And it kind of defeats the purpose of trying to get your music out there. So yeah. Because those people are just data mining, of course. Like, yeah, all tone, tone Den and all those guys are just data mining. We'll create your later track based upon your Facebook likes. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Some super video drone stuff there, yeah. Being from a small Ontario town, yeah. you dropped a fandom near and dear to our hearts. Oh, which one? So, uh, we're curious. Do you wish we weren't so awkward, bud? Ah, <laughs> man, if I had one wish, I wish we weren't so awkward, bud. Oh, man, that's my heart. Letterkenny is my thing right now. We're yeah. essentially two small towns that kind of grew into each other, populated that's by awesome. hockey players and hicks. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh, skids and hockey players, so good. Do you have a favorite Letterkenny problem? Oh man, I see. I love all the original Letter Kenny problem, uh, the original short videos that oh, they, yes. you know that it was based on. So I love the one where you see Daryl talking about getting drunk and driving the riding mower and making a corn maze. <laughs> That's still my favorite. I just I love. I think Daryl's my favorite. 
but it's that show is just so good. It's so funny, and like I was telling my friends here, I was showing it to somebody in the states, and the episode where they fight with um, the girl that everybody's terrified of. Uh, oh, what's her name? She's, uh, reserve. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But, 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 yeah. We, we have the same situation. We were actually connected to Fort William uh, First Nations Reserve as well. Yeah. So the show gets too real sometimes. Too real, yeah. Where it's like, I well, know all of these people. Well, so the episode <laughs> where where they burn down his fruit, fruit stand and they, they finally take up for Stuart by giving her the money. Well, during the fight, the money rolls across the ground and you see, you see uh, Wayne pick it up. My friend is like, oh, that money looks so fake. And I was like, <laughs> that's actual Canadian money. They're like, no, it's not. And I was like... I will bring some home and show it to you. So, like, it was just so funny because they just are so used to, like, seeing greenbacks, I guess. Just the fact that this super colorful ball of money went rolling across the parking lot. They're like, well, what's on it? Why does it look silver? I go, there's a little silver part on it, too. Man, I love that show, though. It's And it's funny because kids in the States are starting to cosplay as those characters. No way. What? That's inventions. What? At Anime Boston, there was a whole Letterkenny crew. Oh, and it man. was good, complete with Gale. <laughs> Somebody was dressed as Gale, which I was like, yes! <laughs> Squirrely Dan, everybody, it was so good. So About 70% of my high school was made up of Jonesy and Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all of our high schools, but those guys, I love those. That's They're such fun, and Shorzy. I just think that holds, like... The dynamics they play in that show are so well, like like almost to the South Park level of working perfectly for like perfect comedy stuff. Wayne and Daryl's timing, oh man, their timing is just it. The I, the only person I I think has closer timing is she's a British comedian, Catherine Tate, and uh, she and David Tennant had a sketch for Red Nose Day a few years ago. That's one of those back and forth kind of the way Daryl and Wayne go. So. So what else? Now that you've seen me nerd out about food, <laughs> Kenny. Yeah. Uh, you've played a, a serial killer. Yeah, I was uh, just talking about that yeah. up there. That's uh, when I so, came up with the question. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so since you've played a serial killer, how do you get away with murder? Oh, man, you don't. You don't. You don't. That's, <laughs> that's the thing. thing. You don't. Yeah, I mean, I've never wanted a character I play to get skinned alive as bad as I did that kid in Gantz. He <laughs> oh, was just an awful little guy. But, yeah, I think it's funny. That was the first bad role I played. And at the time, I was playing all these little pointy-haired, like, guys. So anybody that liked my work associated me with all this, like, super virtuous, loyal friend guy. And mm-hmm. then I'm like... The 16 year old serial killer and I was just telling the director there's a scene that I can't even describe for the podcast it's so awful punching a lady and I'll just leave it at that when we were recording and I was like oh my god people that know I'm in this are gonna freak out because I play <laughs> such an awful little guy so but uh, it worked out okay because I've played a lot of villains since yeah. then even lovable ones like Monokuma but I, I think playing villains is always a little more fun they're a little more to work with it's so. not such a hard transition for you anymore? No, I mean, because, like, I learned a lot doing that role in Gantz, and probably the most important thing that my director taught me on that, because it would be really easy to play Moroto as just this, like, <clears throat> this little, like, rabid kid. Yeah. But he's like, if you really want to make this disturbing, he goes, do not show any level of aggression. He's like... I wanted to sound like a cat that's just found a ball of string <laughs> and that like you just love killing people. If you listen in some of like when I'm throwing the water, when I'm throwing the boiling water on the bum, I'm laughing like I'm giggling like a little kid and it makes it really unnerving. It so was. I learned yeah, so I learned that like not to play the first, you know, your first idea is to but like to think about what would make character scary. Like and like about with Monokuma What's so scary about him is you he's charming, like, and he's funny, but he wants you to kill people. Like he's <laughs> the bad guy. That's what is scary about him. He's he's charismatic or charismatic. I can't talk. Gantz taught me anything. It was to look at the roles a little differently. Miyabi said the same thing about playing Watanabe in Broken. He said, uh, in order for this character to be believable, I had to find the humanity of this character, meaning he had to find the things that Watanabe loved to make him very human and very real so that he could do it justice. So I thought it was a really neat way that he put that, but I think that's the key to playing a villain really well is looking past the Sharp teeth and claws. So, yeah. so we always like to end the uh, the interview with awesome. our fun, fast, silly questions. Okay, here we go. So, is it crepe or crepe? 
Oh, man. Depends on where you're standing. <laughs> I'd say crepe. I know if I said it in the States, I would get a funny look, so I'd probably say crepe, just not to get a sideways look. Would you rather pilot a giant robot or be a giant robot? Be a giant yeah. robot. <laughs> if you could ride any giant animal into battle, who, what would it be? Oh, Falcor. Definitely. <laughs> Falcor. Falcor. Always Falcor. Best pupper. If you could swap lives with any of your characters, who would it be? Ooh, that's tough. Uh, <laughs> that's I a think, deep one. Uh, Nagisa, because he's so sweet. Like, I, And I wouldn't think I would pick the one that has to swim sports, but <laughs> I love that little kid is so positive about everything. Mm -hmm. So maybe Nagisa. My life would be better if I was that positive, maybe. So, If tomatoes are fruit, is ketchup a smoothie? It is. In a way. <laughs> I hate that question. It's so gross. But see, I like I like tomato stuff, so I'm yeah. like, yeah, I could drink a tomato thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's basically a thick yeah. Caesar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like a salsa drink. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just got her with that. <laughs> Any words of advice for our brave souls storming Area 51? Uh, yeah, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> So before we let you go, what's next for the great Greg Harris? I do not know. Uh, I am doing some music stuff uh, next year that I'm pretty excited about, but I'm not. It's premature, so I don't want to jinx myself. Uh, I'm sure there's more video game and anime stuff. I just never know what that stuff is. Uh, and the stuff, usually the stuff you're working on right now is not stuff you can talk about. Yeah. We'll uh, find out in the future. Yeah, but <laughs> I, like, I'm going to Disney World with my best friend in November. <gasps> yes. And the cool thing is I've ever, every time I've ever been to Disney World, it's been with people that hate it. So I'm <laughs> finally going with somebody that knows what they're doing. Like, I didn't know Epcot went past the little silver ball. That's all we ever walked in <laughs> the front of Epcot. I was like, isn't that just like a food court? And he was like, no. I'm also playing music with my best friend for the first time in September, which is really cool. He's just started DJing, and so we're playing a show together in Minneapolis. And then uh, next year, I'm planning on going back to Belgium again to Heck be yeah. crazy. Because 50 was one, but now I've got to be 51. So uh, Might as well make a tradition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be Area 51 when I get there. Like, yeah. Uh, but, Air is uh, 51. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and hopefully here next year, of course. I, I would be sad if I wasn't in Winnipeg in the summer. So I, t I was outside just now, and I was like, man, this is what the sun is supposed to feel like. Because <laughs> in Texas right now, it's like oh. 99 degrees with like 15 to, I mean, 50 to 80% humidity. So it's like, it's like being inside of a hot dog's mouth like it's so bad <laughs> so i was just like this is what summer is supposed to feel like uh, lots of fun stuff i try not to be bored so well, we'll hope to see you next year and we'll grace you with more food questions. awesome oh you, and you can tell i hate food so <laughs> i'll make sure i will have more food for you next time oh thank you awesome yeah thank you guys ah oh, that was so fantastic thank you so much for greg again for sitting down with us at icon Oh, I liked I liked when he when he when he got me with this uh, what was it salsa smoothie? Ah! It's a thick Caesar. He's <laughs> trolling you, Megan, is just too easy sometimes. I don't know. And I love that Greg picked up on that instantly. He's like, oh, this is the one we make fun of. Okay. <laughs> he was so fun and nice to talk to. I just I was really 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 really. Had a good time with that interview. Sorry, my brain is just, I just like... And then, you like things. My, my favorite part is Greg sounds. I need to take just yes. the food sounds that we have. Because <laughs> we did blip out around the video for a little bit during the food sounds. We It'll are gonna, be on YouTube tomorrow. So yeah, we'll have the full episode. But I want to take just those sounds and I just want to mix them together. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I will say, because I know he's listening, Greg, thank you for that rum chata and butterscotch drink. That was dangerously oh, it was, good. Oh, it, it was so exactly good. It's exactly like a cinnamon bun. It's so messed up. You drink it and your brain's like cinnamon bun, but you don't have to chew it. And you're like, oh, what? there's Kyle. It's like can't touch liquor. Oh. But, yeah. folks, we do have to head to a commercial break. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM C I L U around the world at luradio.ca or streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak where your thunder geeks will be right back and we're back you're listening to thunder geeks brought to you by 102.7 fm c i l u around the world at luradio.ca or streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak 
That was Shane Orak, of course, covering Good Morning World from uh, Dr. Stone that Rob has surprisingly fallen in love with. Yeah, um, I, I finally figured out what it is about the show I love, and it took a few episodes. Oh. They plan so far ahead that little things you don't think about actually are huge plot points later down the road. And I like uh. shows that do. Foreshadowing. No, no, I don't Ro think <laughs> that's foreshadowing. Rob, Rob oh. what you have just described is literally it's foreshadowing. foreshadowing. No, I think there's a different word for if it, because foreshadowing means something's going to happen, but th like this is an insignificant thing you throw away. Foreshadowing is like, oh, something with this is going to happen. It just means that you set it up beforehand. Like okay. that, that's really all it means is that you set it up, and if you haven't set it up, it's a MacGuffin. Also, they do. At the end of the credits, I realized they say all the science is actually based on real research we did. Please don't do it. Because <laughs> in one of the episodes, they have to make alcohol. That's but, important. That's actually very actually important. And they actually go through the method of fermentation and how to do it. And they explain, like, the science of how fermentation does yeah. the thing? Yeah. Because oh. they realize they need a catalyst to de-stone people. And I realize how silly that sounds. But they're like, okay, we need, we got this chemical that's dripping off because of the back guano, but we need something to make it stronger. Alcohol. You're also thinking nitric acid. Thank you, nitric nitric, acid. Nitric acid. Nitric acid. You said nitric acid. I did. <laughs> I sure did. It's okay. So alcohol counteracts the stone feeling is what I'm hearing? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense, ah, actually. I've known that for quite some time. <laughs> Weird enough, Facebook Watch, which makes television shows, I know. What? They're, yeah, yeah, they have several shows. I Ooh. showed you one of them. Uh, Facebook Watch? <laughs> yeah, Facebook has been doing original programming that no one's watched. So okay. the indie people have been doing weird things with it. Uh, I showed you one of them. Uh, it was Almost Human. With... Oh, yes, yes. I, I, I remember. <laughs> They also have one going on right now that's essentially a situ animated situation comedy of cavemen relearning things. <gasps> so very similar to Doctor Stone, and of Unga course, Bunga? there's like it's like the Unga, Unga Bunga. no, it's that's Prometheus racist, and Megan. <laughs> no, it's, you can't say that about cavemen, Megan. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cavus. It's that's, that is very cavus. Okay. Uh, excuse me. It's a Flava Flav song. <laughs> <laughs> Unga Bunga G. I was just memes. Unga Bunga is also what Chuck Rock, Chuck Rock says at the beginning of the level. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, classic 16-bit uh, platformer Chuck Rock, where, uh, get this, you played as a caveman and you chucked rocks, and it opened up with a rock sequence. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they need the nitric acid and alcohol to de-stone people? Uh, so the pr premise of the show is quite simply... Usually those go together. <laughs> um, alcohol and getting stoned. All of a sudden, a global <laughs> event happens that turns petrifies every person on the planet into stone. 3,700 years later, our main character, Seku, wakes up. He's like, I'm going to take the world from the Stone Age to the Space Age in my lifetime. Oh, yeah? Going to the moon! But the Earth is flat, so you can't. <laughs> but yeah, that's the entire premise <laughs> of the show. Is this one crazy scientist kid who's, is literally like, I'm going to do this. Try and stop me. He's also in high school. We should probably probably. Oh, yeah, it's, well, it's always it's a high anime. school kid. It's yeah. anime. Anime involves always involves high school kids. Ah, uh, no, no. Ah, not, not always. Not, not always. always. But ninety nine point nine percent. Yes. But yeah. So yeah, uh, he unlocks his friend who is a muf muscle bound idiot. Oh, so no, he's like, okay, Rob. you do the heavy. No, I'm not muscle bound. But if he's if any an of idiot. us was going to be the workhorse. It, <gasps> it, It'd be Kyle. <laughs> It'd be you? Kyle. I don't see Kyle working. <laughs> hey, Kyle, what were you doing today? I was, like, literally just working today. <laughs> okay, okay. He stained a dick. Oh. I had the blood stains. Good job. To move the concrete for him when he needs to. So, yeah. But it's a, it's a fun show, and uh, the third episode introduces an element that <laughs> this is what cemented the show for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pun intended, yes. Um, our two characters get cornered by lines, and they're like, we got enough of this elixir to wake up one person. There's lines here. Maybe we can... This really buff dude behind us can, you know, help us fend off the lions. No. Let's go get the buff dudes. No, no way, man. You, no un way. you unlock the skinny dudes, you throw the skinny dude at the lions, <laughs> so they're hung they're no longer hungry. No, nah, so they unlock him, and at first he's OP as heck, actually taking down a lion. 
Yeah, he literally punches a lion. This is some shenanigans. A doesn't high school KO, punching lion. Doesn't he like KO the lion? Oh, he, KO. He totally kills it. Yeah, but he just KOs um, the lion at first it punch. just seems like this dude's like, all right, pretty chill, strong, but a little <laughs> chill. No, uh, no. Uh, and then they find out he has a massive hatred for all adults because he was treated badly a lot. So he's like, you know, I have no I, no op opposition to bringing back people, but let's just kill all the adult statues. So he just huh. goes up and he like punches one. And all of them. He just starts smashing any adult statue and the other guys are like, you know, you know this is murder. He's like, I don't care, they're adults. Ah, uh, is it though? They're stone. No, they actually, no, they actually do explain in the show's mythos that a full a full statue can be recovered, but if it's been shattered, they're as good as dead. You cannot put them back together. Did they explain if, like, one of the statues is missing a, an arm or something? Um, so Seku tries to bring back a shattered stone statue after putting it back together, and he's like, yeah, it was just guts. Ew. Ooh. So Ooh. they're like, okay, once, a sh once it's shattered, even if you put it back together, no. Dead. So Seku's like, I don't care about your prejudice. I want to bring humanity back to where it was. And this guy's like, I like the Stone Age. Oh, that's fair. He's the strongest. Yeah, he's, yeah. he is the Strong. strongest. He's like so. It's literally a battle of brains versus bronze. Uh, again, uh, the Facebook Watch series is actually doing this same concept where they have the leader of the tribe who likes way things the way they were, but then you have Gary who keeps uh, making know, the wheel and stuff. Oh no, he accidentally found fire. Accidentally. Yeah, he what accidentally made fire. Oh. Okay. Lightning strike. No, just whacking rocks together and made fire. As one does. As actually, one does. Another fun thing is they actually show that process and failure. Like the first time Seku tries to make fire, he knows about the science and like all the mechanics, but he just can't get it right the first time. It takes a lot of effort. I couldn't do it from Stone Age. However, if I needed to make fire in like current apocalyptic age, nine volt batteries and steel wool. Yo, you can't well, do like trowel thingy where you just nope. back and forth? You take a 9 volt battery, you stick it on steel wool, it will erupt into flames. Okay, hold on though. Okay, because this is how many years in the future? 37,000. 3,700. So batteries are gone. So, yeah, I was going to say, gone. what is intact at this point? Nothing. Nothing. Nature. Nothing. Nature. Nature. Nature is completely taken. taken over yeah. There's almost nothing left to be made. They find one old uh, steel Buddha statue, and they're like, we can use the filings as an ingredient for gunpowder. Nice. What? Well then. Yeah. Why? Oh, because the stone guy can actually catch an arrow out of midair because Seku built a crossbow to take him out. So he's like, okay, if he can take down a crossbow, we need guns. I wasn't aware that they found Superman. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, that is this guy. They found Superman. So Seku being, you know, Mr. Science, he's like, I know the ingredients to gunpowder. I'm going to make a gun. So, Megan, I understand you've been watching an anime that doesn't involve Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I see dead people. <laughs> I see them, man. You never know. She could be in the dub later. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, can okay. we just redub it? Yeah. No, like, <laughs> we need some. In we need. We need Whippet Goldberg. On There's the enough screen. voice clips from the view that we can redub the entirety of this anime <laughs> to tear in the little sister into Whoopi Goldberg. She's not his sister. Okay. So. Uh, well, I mean, anime never let's stopped that. Talk about <laughs> this. I watched an anime called Anohana. Otherwise known as the flower we saw bloom that day. Uh, <laughs> what? What? I don't know. Rob, I mean, Kyle has a different name for the series, but we won't say it. The, fla it, the flowers. The flower that we saw bloom that day. That, yeah. That yeah. one. Yeah, that's, that's the one. one. That's, that's what, what I call it. it. That's what he likes to call it. Anyway. I call it the Patrick Swayze movie. The bl Ghost. What? No. <laughs> Okay, Is so it starts off with uh, our main character. He's a high schooler, but again, he doesn't attend high school. Um, his name is Jintan, or Jinta. Um, Jim, Jin, Jinkun, whatever you like to call Jim. him. Jim. We'll call him Jim. I'm calling him Jim. <laughs> He's now, okay, his name J is Actually, Jim. Actually, Jim twice. It's Jim Jim. Jim Jim. Jim Jim. Jim Jim. Call him Jim Jim. I'm anyway, renaming your characters. Jim. He can see this girl who is no longer with... Us. She's he not sees dead people. He sees dead people. He sees one dead people. He sees one, <laughs> one dead people. people. One whole dead purple. Do we, purple? Do we know this? Can he see other dead? Has no, he gone to a no, graveyard yet? No, he hasn't. He ha doesn't see other dead people. So the what only... a jip. Why jip? What? You can only see one dead people. What if you don't even like her? <laughs> but well, he does. 
Well, and I mean, we sure. saw he really likes her. Not exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so uh, it's the basic concept of this uh, anime is there's a group of friends who unfortunately lost one of their members of their group when they were kids. And now it's dealing with how they handled the loss and how they are about five years later okay. after the, the incident, we'll call it, quote unquote. Um, and again, Jim Jim is the only one that can see <laughs> men. <laughs> Jim Jim! No, Kyle, bad! What? Oh, she died tragically. Uh, Jim, Jim Jim feels uh, very guilty because before she passed away, he was asked if he likes her and he was like oh who could like that ugly little girls are gross girls are gross and they have cooties he had his priorities yeah. straight so he ran home and he wasn't there when she passed away um oh, yeah. so he bridge to terabithia he thinks <laughs> pretty oh. much <laughs> oh show's over we're going home <laughs> the, uh, he thinks that her coming back to like see him is like him hallucinating from stress and anxiety and trauma. He's like, oh, she'll go away. I just need to ignore it. But it really affects uh, like his school and stuff. Like he doesn't go to school anymore. Um, and like she's just there being herself. And she's just the same as she was when she was a kid. Uh, she's a, but, but a little less bit alive. Uh, but less alive, obviously. Thank you, Mom Pod. And it deals with like how. Their friends are into it, and by the way, Popo is Rob, a hundred percent. Yes. To, the first care, the first person of the group that we get to meet is uh, An Anjo. Yeah, An A Anjo. Yeah. Anjo Kazuli. Anjo, Anjo, Anjo Kazuli. Uh, she's um the kind of. Uh, she's a gal. The girl. Isn't that the girl yeah, that works she, like EB? She works yeah. at like a game store, um, but she's a follower, so she kind of like she kind of finds a group of friends, and then she copies what they do, right? So she doesn't really... She's dealing with trying to find her own personality. Find her own... That your identity is whatever the group says. Yeah, your identity is whatever that's, the group says. That's we the wear pink on Wednesdays, okay? <gasps> on, Wednesdays on Wednesdays, we wear pink. pink. Yeah, I just phrased it a little wrong, so it's not copyright. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we get to meet her first, and she's like, you're pathetic, you should come back to school, you know, stop feeling sorry for yourself, and blah, blah, blah. But she's she's still, like caught up on it too because she really liked Medma. But... I mean five years on oh. <laughs> <sighs> I mean I'd be hurt for a long time, but five years you gotta you gotta It's like two weeks, move on. I don't know <laughs> I mean wow. give it a little bit more wow. than Wow. That's two awful. Two and a half weeks. Oh, I'm sorry. Like Nuggies at least three. three years I'll be gone, but by year three five years? Yeah. Yeah, three I'm, years, you're gonna nuggies. You'll be okay. Nuggies, no. it'll take three years to get no, over. No, let me tell you something. I'll still have I, a new cat, but I have I had to hold my dog, okay? So you don't you don't know. I yet. killed a cat. You don't know yet. <laughs> hold the <laughs> what? Hard hold on. No, what? On no. purpose? No, no. I was told to. No, no, no. It Why? was poisoned. And dad was at the bar. No, no. So it was my job. No, oh, no, 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 no. Anyways. This is getting small town. This is getting really It bad. is small town. <laughs> I'm just saying what that. What gave it away? You never really forget, okay? That's the thing. They were a really close friend group, and they just, they really, they really hit, hit them really, really hard. They were young, you know? It just kind of happened. It was a freak accident, too. It brought their um, friendship to a dead end. Oh, <laughs> oh mama. <laughs> Um, the second character of the group that we get to meet is Popo. Which is Rob. Which like, is Rob. Immediately when he came on screen, they're like, oh, there's Rob. And I and I said, I sent to the group chat, I'm like, this guy's Rob. And everyone was like, yeah, okay. But then as soon as I played the episode for you guys, you all just stared at him and you're like, that's you. He Before talks. he said a word. <laughs> yeah, he just like walked in the little like. It's a little shed. Hangout. Little shed hangout. I used to have a fort like, like that. He's used to have a fort. <laughs> that more proof more proof you know he's traveled the world um his his trauma is that he actually saw menma's body Ooh. and he didn't do anything about it Poke he it ran away yeah, and so he kind of that's why he travels a lot because he's running trying away to he's trying to escape his memories. dark past so that's why he's like you know trying so hard to get in contact with her and like help her get to heaven and stuff because that's their mission now is their mission is to, to help send her to heaven send her to heaven oh. i do like his instant belief it's like 
So I'm seeing my dead friend. Dude, you are. That's awesome. Let's do like this. Too. Like this is it so does. creepy. Yeah. You sound exactly like Popo. It's so what you're saying strange. is I should get into voice acting. Yes, I agree. <laughs> We'll, we'll get you. We'll get you one of these. We'll get you more of those yetis. Uh, and then there's the other two members of the group. Um, one of them. They're both kind of uh, rude. Rude. Awful. Just I don't like either of these characters. There's a uh, Suriko and Yukiyatsu. Suriko is uh, she's kind of bland. You know, she's very smart. She doesn't really have a like, personality. Like she's she's again she's bland. I I like her, but Please. I don't. Is that the one that was, like, all uppity about being in a better school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She, I don't really know <laughs> what her deal about her trauma is about it, but she, uh, she really likes Yukiatsu. And to the point where Yukiatsu, when they were kids, uh, was like, oh, you don't need to, like, you know, you don't need to, like, Jim Jim. <laughs> <laughs> girls can kiss girls. No, 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 oh, no. Yukiatsu's the boy. He's oh. like, you don't need to, like, uh, like what does Yukiatsu, or, sorry, what does Jim Jim know? And he's like, I love you, so here's a barrette for your hair. It's pretty. But then, when they're older, That's... you find out that the girl, uh, Suruko, or, sorry, I can't remember her name, uh, she actually has that hair clip, and she wears it when she's home alone. It's kind of creepy. Oh. <sighs> Why yeah, we, Megan. What, so why do you like this? I what? what? Why is it because if, it should star Whoopi Goldberg and what Patrick Stays Spacey? <laughs> so you missed the best part. You missed the best trauma. Oh, okay. I uh, love trauma. Uh, Yukiatsu actually. Um, when the first episode that you saw, he ha- he opens his closet, and he's just like Menma. And sniffs her dress. And s- there's a dress inside of his closet. Oh, gross. Not only does he. Not only did he keep this dress. Does he wear it? He wears it. Oh, oh does he? I'm Lenore. Wig. And he wigs, and he wears a wig, and he's like, I'm Menma. I'm not Bill. He I, tries, I'm Lenore. He tries to trick all the friends <laughs> in the group that he is Menma. And I'm that, Menma. Uh, yeah, and he tries to trick everyone in the group that he is Menma. I'm, I do like I'm okay with this, actually. His, this sounds his, hot. His, his wish is not to, like, you know, oh, you know, it's not fair that Jim Jim can only see me. I should be seen by everyone. I, I do like the fact that like he says, hey, I saw her too over there. And the ghost girl's like, let's go see. <laughs> They're, how dense are you? Her own she, mother. Her own mother. Her, yeah, her, her mother, mother was like, she's too dumb to know she's dead. <laughs> the, I mean, to be fair... Is I'd probably dumb. be that guy. Oh, but yeah. here's the thing. Rob would be too dumb to realize he died because he, he would hold entire conversations with people who are unaware he's dead, like Bruce Willis. Like Bruce Willis! <laughs> Rob would be Bruce Willis. He would just have an entire one-sided conversation. they go, oh, man, it was nice to meet you. See ya. And never actually realize he had died. But here's the other thing. Once I realized I had died and realized I could make contact with the world, like she does. She knocks things over. She makes people feel her physical oh, presence. No. Okay, if Rob could knock... Grab a pencil, right? I'm dead. Okay, episode Hello. six. We do that. Episode six, she grabs a pencil and starts writing stuff. Okay, well, we didn't get to episode yeah. six. So that's I'm just saying... It, so it took... Wait, wait, wait. She is dumb. It took her six episodes <laughs> to realize I can communicate like Ghost Rider. I think it was episode six. I want to say it was either episode five or episode six. PBS had writing. this down 12 years well, ago. Actually, they, 22 years ago, Megan. They go to her to her house where she grew up. Like they go to her parents' house, and they're like, "Oh, uh, we we want to like you know show our condolences for Menma, and we want to have like a celebration for her, sort of thing." Like, Five years and ago. then yeah, their mom or her mom, Menma's mom, is like, "Oh, here's her diary," and her diary is just the same entry basically every day. I went and I played with my friends. It was fun. I went and I played with my friends. Ah! I had fun. I and died. <laughs> some of them were different. Some of them were different. And then there was one. I went to McDonald's and played with my friends. Yeah, literally. it was. Fun. <laughs> I went to the thing and I played with my friends and it was fun. Um, but she uses that diary to speak with people. They figure that her wish was to make a rocket, but that wasn't her wish. Like to send her to heaven, they were going to make a little rocket, a ro- like oh, a firework, right? A flat Earth guy doing that next week. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and he's probably going to be going to go. Oh, uh, the, the government got a hold of it. So, it they 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 curved the Earth while I was up there. They curved the Earth while I was up there. It's um, it's a fish eye lens. Rob asked actually what her wish was when we were watching it, and he was like, "Oh, what her wish was was to actually make Jim Jim cry." Oh, because her her because his mom 
is actually passed away as well. And her mom had asked her when she was still alive, oh, you know, you know. Make this uncaring hey, person feel yeah, for once. Yeah, Jim Jim never gets a chance to show his feelings, so let him. Well, we do have to wrap up the show there, folks. But guys, if you want to continue the conversation online, you can do so on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. Or you can follow us on other social media. Of course, Rob's always uh, uploading everything up to YouTube after the show. No final song here tonight. We're just going to throw right into the next show. I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. I'm Kyle. And we're your Thunder Thunder Geeks. Geeks. We'll see you next week.